What's up, Brozones? Welcome to the Ozone, and welcome to a read-through of the Ultimate Guide. Woohoo! It's finally here! Now, I read the leaks, so I know basically um, some of the big things in this book, but today we're actually going to go through um, a, a chapter of the book, which is my favourite chapter, chapter 12, Past Beth Rights, my favourite part of the series, um, so that's why it's my favourite chapter. Uh, we're going to have a quick read-through of this. Um, and I say quick, but this is going to take a while because we have to go through every story. Um, and there's quite a lot of writing. Um, hopefully it is clear enough to see. Um, anyway, I think we're going to get straight into it. Um, this is going to work a little bit like the Fazla Frights audiobooks that I do, except I'm going to be adding in a few opinions and stuff um, as I go along. So... Let's get straight in there. So, with the release of The Fourth Closet, it seemed as though the loose ends from the FNAF novel trilogy were all tied up, but that didn't mean Scott Cawthon was out of stories to tell. Sometimes fiction, particularly short fiction, can provide a window into important concepts, characters, and technology. These elements can help resolve mysteries of the past or seed new things to come, while also serving as a genuinely terrifying read. The Fazbear Fright series offered all this and more, from time-travelling bull pits to framed kidnappers and everything in between. But as the series went on, a meta-story emerged in the post-story stingers, centering around one determined detective, a child trapped between worlds and an evil that just won't die. So there you go, there's, there's your introduction to the Phasma Frights, if you haven't read it yet. <laughs> we're going to be going through every story, there might be some video chapters if I am feeling... Um, feeling well enough to, <laughs> to go through all of the, uh, the timestamps, but um, yeah, hopefully there'll be some video chapters. Anyway, first story, Into the Pit. Some nice coloured art of the original art here. Very nice. Uh, Internet report form 2530973. I believe all of them are the same number. Yeah, they. Sh I think they're the same number uh, for official use only. So we've got... Oswald, who is a student, Oswald's dad, who is a cashier at Snack Space, Jeff, who is the owner of Jeff's Pizza, and then Chip and Mike, who are both students from 1985. Uh, Oswald's best friend moved away, and he's having a tough time adjusting, especially as a boring, friendless summer vacation um, stretches out before him. That all changes when Oswald decides to chuck off his shoes. Oops, what have I done? Oh no. Oh no, it's all going wrong. Uh, he chucks off his shoes and dives into the old grody, grody ball pit at Jeff's Pizza. Oswald emerges from the ball pit in Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, uh, circa 1985. There he witnesses something truly horrific and brings something terrible back with him. Uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Um, I w can I get this like bigger? I want to be able to zoom in. Can I zoom in? How do I zoom in? Can I zoom in? Zoom. Mm, oh, I can do that. Yeah, I can. Uh, oh, that's 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 not good. That's not good. <laughs> uh, sorry, technical difficulties. I just wish there was a way to zoom properly but it doesn't seem like there is and it's annoying me okay let's just work with this um so remodeled active freddy fazbear's pizza yes while the Fraz uh, fazbear's fright series features many iterations of freddy's the freddy's is notable for being around in 1985 and for being the site of some of its infamous murders missing children's incident during one of his visits to 1985 freddy's Oswald follows a yellow rabbit animatronic back into the party room where he finds six children murdered, all wearing their party hats. Yellow rabbit. Oswald sees a man dressed in a yellow rabbit suit during his um, his visit sorry, to 1985 Freddy's, and the rabbit is there when Oswald enters the horrific party room. The rabbit eventually follows him back through the ball pit. Could this be Springtrap or Spring Bonnie or something else entirely? This isn't the first time something undesirable has been hiding inside a bull pit in Pizzeria Simulator. Molten Freddy sneaks into your pizzeria if you buy the discounted bull pit on Monday. He does. He does indeed. 
Um, time traveling ball pit by by by, uh, by diving into the pit and staying under for 100 seconds, Oswald is able to travel back in time. Interestingly, things from the past are also able to switch places with. I, I'm assuming that says things from the future. <laughs> Things from the present. Um, let's just check. Uh, yeah, something in the present. Cool. I think I'm going to keep the formatting like this, maybe. Um, hopefully, you're able to briefly uh, read uh, this. But if not, you can hear my voice. So, and go go buy the book. Go support Scott because I am just I am just <laughs> recording this. <laughs> um, okay. To be beautiful and honestly. This looks. This is a very good picture. This is great. Um, Sarah is a student. Abby, Lydia, Mason, Blair of all students, and Sarah's mum is a social worker. Uh, if only Sarah were beautiful, her life would be easy. She'd be popular. She'd have cool friends, and she could date her crush. Passing a junkyard on her way home from school, Sarah finds Eleanor, a beautiful animatronic. For saving her, Eleanor says she'll grant Sarah any wish. Sarah wishes to be beautiful. Each night, uh, 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 Eleanor sings to her, and each morning, Sarah wakes up a little more beautiful. But is Sarah truly becoming prettier, or is her appearance hiding a monstrous secret? I think it's the latter. <laughs> uh, illusion discs. Ooh. Eleanor gives Sarah a special necklace and tells her never to take it off. The end of the story reveals that this pendant seems to function similar to the illusion discs seen elsewhere in the canon. Yes. So it could be illusion discs. Um, junkyard animatronics. Sarah finds Eleanor in a junkyard where we've seen many animatronics dumped throughout the FNAF books and games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, new leads. Eleanor, she seems to be a new animatronic, albeit with a familiar design. Her de description and portrayal closely matches that of Circus Baby, and her name Eleanor is oddly similar to Afton's daughter's name, Elizabeth. True. True dat. <laughs> I don't think that means she's coming back in Security Breach, though. <laughs> um, so, okay, count the ways. Again, lovely, lovely art. The, the artwork for all of these are just incredible. I love them so much. So, Millie Fitzsimmons and Dylan are students. Millie's grandfather is uh, is retired, and he's a collector as well. Um, it seems like no one wants Millie around. Her parents abandoned her to live with her grandfather in her, uh, his museum-like house of antiques and oddities. No one at school knows or cares that she exists. Mike spends... Mike? Wait, Mike? Oh, Millie. It, it looks like Mike from far away. Millie spends most of her time uh, romanticising death, an end to her torment. Uh, but when Millie has the chance to get her wish trapped inside the belly of an animatronic, why isn't she thrilled to die? Um, so, Funtime Freddy, the animatronic Millie finds herself trapped in appears to be a Funtime Freddy based on the description and large storage compartment in his belly. Eaten alive, readers of the Twisted Ones graphic novel may recognise the similar illustration for this story, yes. Yes. Uh, new leads, the animatronic's fate. We've seen several stories in which old animatronics are found in junkyards or abandoned in old pizzeria locations, but this is the first time we've seen an animatronic find its way into the hands of a random collector. It certainly won't be the last time though. Yes. Cool. I like that story. Count the Ways is a very underrated story in my opinion. Okay, moving on to Fetch. Again, this artwork is uh, is brilliant. Um, so, all of these students, Greg, Hady, Cyril and Kimberly Bergstrom, I think that's I think that's that's her surname. Uh, that, that's the crush of uh, of Greg, and uh, Uncle Dave, who is an inventor, who I believe is the person, the finger, the the, the lucky finger who has the lucky finger. Um, Greg has become engrossed with the impact that thought and intention can have on random real world events so one night when he feels drawn to the old rundown pizzeria in town he doesn't hesitate before breaking in with his best friends at the dusty prize counter greg finds a robotic dog called fetch the ultimate retrieval machine greg activates the animatronic but doesn't think much of it until he starts getting strange texts 
from an unknown sender and the answers to his darkest wishes. Very cool. Uh, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza abandoned. Greg finds Fetch at the prize counter of an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. Uh, though the place is dusty, it's largely intact. Cyril researches the location and the franchise on an online forum for people who explore abandoned places. New leads. Fetch, this animatronic dog is designed to sync up with your phone in order to retrieve information and other things for you. It's, it's kind of weird because the Fetch um, was an old animatronic, obviously, because this is an abandoned pizza. But somehow it connects to modern day phones. So it kind of shows how um, how Afton Robotics and Fazbear Entertainment, they they develop technology that were way ahead of the, of the time, of the period of time with other companies and stuff. So that's something to keep in mind. <clears throat> Oh, it, here it is. <laughs> Animatronics interacting with new tech. From the story, it seems like the pizzeria has been closed for 10 years or more. Fetch has been seemingly locked inside the pizzeria for just as long, but he's able to interact with Greg's smartphone. Could this point to the advanced technology of the robotics or something else? So, yeah. Uh, random event generators, REGs. REGs are machines meant to generate a random response. Scientists designed them to let the, uh, to test the power that a person's thought or intention might have over a random outcome. Greg is fascinated by this science, but as Kimberly points out, he's um, he's he's tangling, yeah, he's tangling with forces much larger than himself. True. <laughs> uh, okay, Lonely Freddy. <clears throat> uh, Alec and Hazel, who are brother and sister. I wish I kind of said how they were related. Uh, but I guess you have to read. You have, you have to read for that. But um, I can tell you how they're related because I know everything about Fazbear Frights. <laughs> uh, Alec and Hazel are siblings, yes. Uh, everything was great for Alec until his spoiled sister Hazel came along. When their parents announced that Hazel is getting a birthday party at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, the kind of party he's always wanted, it's the last straw. Alec is determined to run his sister's big day at any cost, or ruin his sister's big day at any cost. While scooping um, out the pizzeria, or scoping out the pizzeria, sorry, Alec crosses... Crosses what? Crosses paths, sorry, crosses paths with Lonely Freddy. A whole fleet of pint-sized animatronics designed to hold conversations with lonely kids. Something about the Lonely Freddies feel creepy, but Alec has bigger priorities, especially when he hears his sister... Uh, uh, wait, hang on, sorry. He hears his sister has a shot at winning a prized Yag Foxy plush, yes. I feel like that's a bit of a weird description of that, but okay. Um... An active Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, Hazel's birthday party is held at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, and Remnant, yes, the soul, rap uh, the soul swapping abilities of the Lonely Freddy animatronics seem to imply some sort of Remnant capturing technology, though how it works is unknown. Yeah, it's kind of weird how that works. I, I, I must say, it's weird. Um, that's connections to Pizza Reassimilator, the fourth closet, and special delivery. Interesting. Um, new leads, Lonely Freddy, a series of animatronics deployed uh, at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza locations designed to keep Lonely Kids company. In reality, these animatronics seemingly steal the souls of children. And the Yarg Foxy, a variation of the Foxy animatronic and a favourite of Alec and Hazel. Uh, the plush toy for Yarg Foxy is rare and can seemingly only be won by catching a prized Yarg Foxy ticket in the wind tunnel game. That sounds a little bit like the, the game in Jump for Tickets. I don't know if they're the same game. They probably aren't, but it does sound a lot like it. Okay, we're moving on to Out of Stock. I really love this art for Out of Stock. It's so good. It's incredible. Um, so, okay, Oscar, Raj, and Isaac. Oscar and his friends have been eagerly awaiting the release of the hottest new Freddy Fazbear toy, the plush trap Chaser. The friends pull their money and head to the store on release day, only to find out that the toy is sold out, although not completely. One plush trap Chaser re remains, though it looks a little too... Um, sorry, I cannot read that. It looks a little too... God, that... That 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 word 
this doesn't doesn't make sense to me it looks a little too something and it's in a mangled box um it's just it, yeah it's a, it's a weird animatronic oscar is sick of missing out so he slaps some money on the counter grabs the toy and runs but is oscar really bringing home the hottest new toy or is he about to unwrap a nightmare uh, so the plush trap chaser follows similar rules to the plush trap featured in FNAF 4 in that it moves in the dark and freezes in the light. It does. It does. I actually didn't notice that at first <laughs> when first reading it. Oh my god. Um, new leads. The plush trap chaser is an animatronic toy that moves in the dark and freezes in the light. Oscar notes that plush trap is his favorite character from the Freddy Fazbear world. Implying that Plush Trap is part of the Freddy Fazbear character canon. Something that Fazbear Entertainment is marketing and and profiting. Profiting. Is that the right word? Profiting. Yeah, profiting f from. Not trying to cover up. Um, yeah, I didn't actually notice that. Yeah. So, we, I always thought like Plush Trap was just kind of some nightmare in FNAF 4. Uh, like kind of like a, sp a spring trap nightmare or something. I don't know. I don't know what the explanation I thought for plush trap was, but that doesn't make sense. That plush trap is actually being sold. Um, it's kind of weird that that the plush trap is being sold, but okay. Um, and another lead about the plush trap chaser. While Freddy themed merchandise is available in the prize counter of Freddy's locations, this is the first time in the canon we've seen Freddy merch in an independent toy store. True. True, true, true. Okay, moving on to 1.35 a.m. Uh, this is a this is an okay story. Delilah, who is a waitress. Nate is a diner owner. And Harper is an actor. Oh my god, all these names are flushing back into my head. Um, especially Harper. I, I forgot about Harper. Um, Delilah is a clown on her luck waitress. Recently divorced and struggling to get by. While, bri while browsing a garage sale, she comes across Ella, an elaborate helper doll animatronic whose only working function is an alarm clock. Delilah purchases Ella to help with her chronic lateness at work and even sets the alarm when she gets home, but it doesn't go off. Thinking the doll is broken, Delilah throws Ella away, but Ella has a job to do and nothing will stop her from doing it. The design of Ella and some of her functions... Um, serve, serve drinks seem to match the doll Henry created for Charlie in the novel series. Yes, though this Ella does seem to have more features and appears to have been mass produced. Uh, Fast Brand Entertainment. This is noted as the company that produced Ella, though Delilah says she's never heard of it. Uh, Ella is an animatronic helper doll that can perform an ex uh, an exhaustive list of tasks such as keep time serve as an alarm clock manage appointments keep track of lists take photos read stories sing songs serve drinks test the ph levels in water and even do personality assessments based on a pre-programmed list of 200 questions ella is a pretty useful doll honestly yeah i would i would want an ella doll <laughs> Um, this art is really scary as well. It's this is so creepy. I cannot believe how creepy this is um, Just the black eyes staring um, It's kind of cool. Okay, one of my favorite stories now uh, Room for one more uh, Stanley who is a night guard and Melissa who is a courthouse worker um, Still still reeling from a breakup with his long-term girlfriend Stanley is feeling lonelier than ever it doesn't help that Stanley works as the only night guard in an isolated underground facility. Most nights, Stanley just falls asleep at his desk from sheer uh, boredom. But that all changes when the alarm goes off in one of the vents. And, uh, yeah, and a strange ballerina doll appears on his desk. This doll is whispering that it wants to go home with him. Uh, the mini arenas are dolls. They made their first appearance in this location. Uh, they appear on Stanley's desk. The dolls speak with him and they find a way to go home with Stanley each night. That's a very subtle way of saying they use Stanley, just like Ennard uses Michael in this location. 
Um, secretive underground facility, speaking with his location. Um, Stanley doesn't know the name of his employer, but the deep underground facility, cramped office, and vent monitors seem familiar to the setting of sister location, Circus Babies Entertainment and Rental. Uh, making sure nothing gets out. When you play as a FNAF security guard, your general mission is to ensure nothing gets into the office. Uh, the story seems to follow a similar thread to sister location in which the animatronics are looking to escape. True. Okay, the new kid. This is also incredible art. Oh, look at this. This is so good. And I, I really love the... I, I know people have been like laughing at this design for Golden Freddy slash Fredbear, but... Just look at him, he's so cool, and I really love the teeth. Like, he's got a massive wide jaw, and it just shows the sheer size of the animatronics. Um, so, we've got Devon Blaine Marks, or Blair, uh, Mick, I'm not saying that last name, uh, and then you've got Kelsey and Heather, they're all students. Um, Devon isn't the most popular kid at school, but he doesn't mind, so long as he can get his crush, Heather, to notice him. That all changes when Kelsey moves to town. The new kid is handsome and popular, and he even catches Heather's eye. Jealous, Devon invites Kelsey to an abandoned pizzeria out in the woods, where an old animatronic costume and revenge awaits. <laughs> yeah, I really like the story. Uh, golden Freddy Springlock Suit. The old pizzeria contains a Golden Freddy Springlock Suit that still functions. Kelsey notes that he's heard of more recent mascot costumes that are high-tech, allowing you to speak in the voice of the character. It is later noted that the animatronic does contain a dead body with curly black hair. Okay, so it's said that it, it is later noted. So has the was the was the body always in there, or did it just appear randomly? Because uh, that's, that's still a question I have about this story. I, I still have a question about the whole Kelsey and black-haired boy thing. So yeah. Um, and an abandoned Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. The old pizzeria is a bit mouldy, but largely intact, with most of its animatronics and furniture still inside. And of course, Kelsey. There's something not right about Kelsey. He survives being trapped inside the Springlock suit, and seems to, seems to entrap multiple kids to similar fates. So who is he? And what does he want? Yeah. Yeah, Kelsey is the big anomaly in all of this, honestly. I feel like Kelsey is a more powerful soul. Um, so, yeah, I, I feel like... I don't know. I don't know. 